As a child, I was traumatized by my swimming teacher. She was, she was kind of scary. But surviving 100 days in hardcore Minecraft in an ocean only world is a lot scarier. You've got these guys, these guys, and even these guys. So sit back, relax, as I try and make the most of this endless expanse of water. The first thing I noticed when I spawned in was that I've been gifted a dictionary. I read it for a grand total of two seconds before remembering I'm a college dropout. I swam over to a nearby shipwreck and said hi to this thing. I then began gathering wood. I put my multitasking abilities to the test by drowning at the same time. I crafted a measly four planks, but that won't get me very far. I narrowly avoided a puff of fish and searched the ship for anything of value. This world's off to a great start. I saw a pirate ship in the distance and said, hey, that looks like a really fun place to get murdered. I immediately knew these pirates were evil when it turned out their ship was made of slabs. Luckily, I was able to get some full blocks from the side. I was getting tired of paddling around and climbed onto the boat. It was much easier to gather wood now that I wasn't flailing around in the water. I punched one plank too many and broke into the captain's quarters. My inner loot goblin was crying tears of joy when I opened these chests. I crafted the remaining pieces of iron armor, as well as a diamond sword, pickaxe, and an iron axe. I collected some of the floorboards and turned them into doors before making my escape. Also, is it just me or do the drowned have the absolute worst hitbox when they're swimming? Either that or I'm just bad at the game, honestly probably the second one. I did some more really fun drowning which took me down to 5 hearts. I desperately needed to find food but the shipwreck said, what about some metal? I finally, finally remembered that oceans do indeed have fish. I was gonna check out this underwater ravine, but these shark monsters were definitely bad news. Instead, I placed down a trusty door and started digging myself a hole. It was a million times more annoying than usual because I kept forgetting that there was sand above me. I put my fish in the furnace, but they weren't cooking. Yeah, turns out you can only eat tropical fish raw. With Nemo and friends in my stomach, I went out searching for a more fulfilling meal. This cooked cod went down a little bit better. I made some charcoal for torches so that I could actually see and then began mining. Seeing as I didn't have a bed, this was the best way to pass the time until morning. I really didn't want to resort to living off tropical fish and headed over to the pirate ship. I was certain they had food on board and I was not disappointed. Hay bales had never looked better. They even had barrels with meat, baked potatoes, um, whatever this is, and seeds. I turned the hay bales into wheat and made myself a ton of bread. I also crafted myself a shield. I found a second treasure room and after chopping at everyone's ankles, I was able to get to the loot. I replaced my unenchanted helmet and leggings with my new ones and then got jump scared by an arrow. There was a smaller ship nearby and I made my way over. I started off by sending all the food into the ocean and then played peekaboo with a vindicator. I don't think he liked it very much. After getting headbutted by a drowned, I made my way onto the boat. Hey Ferb. I know what we're going to do today. Before I turned the ship into a bonfire, I crafted some shears and grabbed some wool from the sail. This whale was absolutely massive. Climbing aboard was going great, but with the help of my shield, I was able to deal with the pillagers. Some people would fight these guys with honor, but I think I'll pass. Any moment now, they're going to burn. Any second. Okay, I'm bored now. It was at this point that I realized setting fire to the ship I was currently standing on was the worst idea I've ever come up with. The loot was worth dying for though. I sailed away from the $500,000 in property damage I just caused. I saw a small island in the distance and headed over. There was a spawner, which I immediately took care of, and a golden apple in the chest. The view at the ocean was only slightly spoiled by the burning ship on the right. I decided to use the island as a temporary base and made a few chests in order to clear out my inventory. I began cooking some prime 12 ounce steak and cut down this palm tree. I tried to break the leaves to get saplings, but that wasn't going so well. We're on day three and my soul's already crushed. I could see this raft from a mile away thanks to its bright pink sail and made my way over. I decided to leave the spawner alone just to see what would come out. Eventually a pirate spawned, wielding a terrifying wooden spoon. I found some raw cod as well as some illager silver nuggets. The entire raft was made of solid logs so I was able to get a ton of wood. Seeing as getting a sapling was looking extremely unlikely, I had to stockpile as much as possible. I picked up my DoorDash order of more steak and then set out to see what else I could find. There was an island with some palm trees and not much else. There was also a raft which had a year's supply of apples on board. I threw this jungle wood into the ocean where it belongs and then continued my travels. Before 
before long, a spruce wood ship came into view and you best believe I'm robbing that. I found some bars of illager silver as well as a few other bits and pieces. I could hear the rattles of skeletons and sure enough, this boat was full of them. I laughed as everything burned. Before remembering, I wanted that spruce wood and I've just set it on fire. I tried to put out the blaze, but it was too late. I made a hole in the side of the ship and found a totem of undying in this chest, with the second containing ender pearls. I made my way home as the sun slipped below the horizon, and by the time I got back it was dark. I filled my inventory with as much stuff as I could carry, because tonight would be my last night on the island. Day 4, I set out with high hopes and missing legs for some reason. I found a shipwreck with a treasure map, as well as some moss blocks and bamboo. I was minding my own business rowing along when this orca decided to jump scare me. He's adorable though, so I'll forgive him. There was a pirate below deck and I wanted to get a better look. Out of all the things I expected him to do, shooting me was pretty high on the list to be honest. I decreased his life points to zero and then had a look through his belongings. He actually had a spare pistol along with some ammo. I saw a yellow creature in the distance and it turned out to be an octopus. I accidentally shot my boat, which definitely didn't make me jump. I came across another spruce ship, which hopefully wouldn't end up in flames. The loot's usually decent. Oh, all right then. I headed below decks in order to test out my new pistol. It was pretty effective. Before I could get rid of all the spawners, the skeletons rushed at me. My iron armor has the defensive capabilities of drywall and I lost half my health. After fueling up with a medium rare, I began taking down the skeletons one by one. Guys, one murder at a time, wait your turn. The loot was pretty good, especially since I got two more golden apples. I turned my iron ingots into blocks in order to save space in my inventory. No self-respecting pirate would be low on ammo, so I crafted some more. In the morning, I made my way over to this acacia ship, which had some more silver. I played some Call of Duty with this pirate and found a second enchanted golden apple. My inventory being so full meant I couldn't loot all these boats, and that was heartbreaking. But if I'm gonna be the best pirate to ever sail these waters, Discipline is crucial. Okay, maybe one more won't hurt. I was fully expecting a fight, but it was empty. I found a pirate pistol, which I combined with mine to get full durability. There were also some coconuts, and while I tried really hard, sadly you can't throw them. I was considering settling down on this island when I spotted a much bigger one in the distance. It wasn't much, but there was way more real estate here than any other island so far. I immediately crafted some chests and dumped my possessions inside. I was too poor for full diamond tools, so I had to settle for an iron shovel and axe. I also found out I can dual wield with my pistol and sword, and that's cool. Like, that is cool. It also means I can threaten you to subscribe. On a scale of 1 to 10 of island size, mine is currently at maybe 2.5. I wanted to change that, so I began gathering sand from the ocean floor. After extending the island with my limited supply of sand, I realised it kind of looks like the UK. Seeing as this ocean-only world has no government or law enforcement, my island is now officially the United Kingdom. There's also nothing here, so at least it's accurate to real life. I realised I needed a lot more space before I could begin building my house and invested in a diamond shovel. I went over to say hi to this jellyfish and it both poisoned and blinded me. I did what anyone in my position would do and yeah. After scraping more sand off the ocean floor, I added it to the UK. I know I could have taken the easy way and just built a huge platform of cobblestone, but as some of you know, I always go for the aesthetics. Even if building a cobblestone platform would have saved so much time and effort. I spotted a small underwater chasm and decided to check it out. There was some iron and coal, but not much else. This fish looks like a hostile mob, right? Like, that is a hostile mob. Turns out it was a harmless fish, and he didn't even drop anything. And now I feel the crushing weight of guilt for a creature in a block game. I continued to gather sand, and once again got stung by jellyfish. I tried to get my revenge, but I couldn't find it anywhere. I wanted to check out this geode, but there was an entire meet and greet of monsters in there. After accidentally causing not one, but two creepers to blow up, the geode was mine. I discovered that this underwater cave went way deeper than I thought. I had my essential diving gear with me, you know, doors and nothing else, which kept my air supply topped up. This cave was kind of disappointing, honestly. 
I didn't find a single diamond. I'm trying to be the richest pirate of the seven seas, not the poorest peasant. I wanted to see if there was anything near my island and set out in my boat. Hold on, I'd recognize that red and yellow color scheme anywhere. This is clearly a McDonald's ship. I climbed aboard and before long came across a customer who'd eaten the filet fish I went below deck and nearly died almost immediately. The pirates armed with cutlasses were not messing around until I blocked the staircase and then they had no idea what to do. I took out the spawner but there were still a few pirates left. Ammo was extremely precious and I didn't want to waste it all fighting these guys. I ate a golden apple and rushed in to take out the final enemies. There was some cooked cod in this chest which I'm sure would have been used to make more filet of fish. I also decided to collect the wool from the sail because this world has absolutely zero sheep. I came across a small outpost and decided to invite myself inside. I stole a bunch of food and the garden. I stole the garden. I made my way on board the ship and began fighting the owners. Put it down. Put it down! The skeletons were kind enough to forfeit all their possessions to me, which included their ship. I took the sail, the mast, even the sides. As I made my way back home, I found something that shocked me to my core. A chicken. Why is there a chicken in an ocean only world? This child wanted to come with me, but I said no. I only want the chicken. I sailed back home with my very first friend. You might be thinking, his first friend's a chicken. That's the saddest thing I've ever heard in my life. And you would be right. But he also serves as emergency food, so at least he's practical. Your best friend's not edible. I hope. Unfortunately, my island was still too small to build on, so I had to shovel more sand. I pretty much shoveled sand all day and added it all to my island, even though making a cobblestone platform would have been a million times easier. I was going to name my chicken something KFC related, but naming your only friend Six Piece Family Feast would make conversations a little awkward. I'll call him Banjo instead. I could go to bed, or I could gather sand all night. Like a complete loser! I also lost half my health to a drowned and I can't even make excuses here. I just have the combat abilities of a five year old. I did at least find a shipwreck which had some decent loot. I surfaced on day nine to the pouring rain and got straight to placing sand. I'm not sure what I expected to happen by piling sand everywhere but it made the island look like a blob. I've turned the UK into a blob. I spent the next few minutes frantically trying to sort it out and the results were passable. I lit up my new land and then realized the chest I throw all my items in was now completely full. Instead of clearing it out, I made a second chest to throw more stuff in. This is going to come back to haunt me later, isn't it? I made a bunch of torches because it was time to do the first half of this game's title. You know, mine, Minecraft. Uh, anyway, it went about as well as you might expect. I explored the flooded ravine I just dug into and found kelp. I found a massive pocket of dirt and I should not be this happy about some dirt. Ocean only changes a man. I mined some redstone, not because I have any actual ability to use it, but because XP noise make brain happy. I started strip mining for diamonds, didn't find any, and then flooded the mine again. The ravine I dug into actually connected to an entire cave system, and I mean, I might as well explore it. I mean, surely there's diamonds in here. There weren't. The flooded caves weren't going too well, so I decided to explore some slightly drier ones. This skeleton came out the shadows like he was Batman and I remained very calm and composed. As I swam back through the ravine, I realized it was full of those shark monsters from earlier. One of them used some kind of sound wave and then rushed straight at me. I bravely hid around the corner and whacked it until it died. It dropped a tooth and I don't think I'm cut out for this career. I returned to the surface and immediately threw all my junk, I mean items, in my chest. I wanted to get a sapling from a wandering trader so badly I sacrificed my own moral code. Time for that ugly cobblestone platform. The UK is not exactly massive, so I needed as much spawning space as possible. And when a trader does show up, he'll probably sell me everything except what I actually want. I also decided to reject the coordinate system and make a compass. Why? Why did I do that? It did make me feel more like a pirate though. Before long, I came across a ship full of dead guys and decided, yeah, I'll say hello. I managed to grab a diamond, but I'd need way more ammo to actually capture this ship. Or I could just go in anyway, I mean it's not like anything bad's gonna happen. Well, I am an optimist. I spent most of the night exploiting Sun Tzu's deadliest strategies, which included jumping and panicking. 
See, this is why you don't mine for diamonds. Just steal them instead. I blocked off the locker rooms and ended up finding the food storage. It was overflowing with melons and pumpkins, which gave me an idea. I turned some of the melon slices into seeds and tamed this parrot. I tamed this parrot on my first try and realized all the pumpkins in here were carved, which meant I couldn't turn them into seeds. Amazing! I wanted to take some of these adorable mini pumpkins and melons, but they take up one inventory slot each. While trying to make my way up, I ended up breaking into the captain's quarters. I'm gonna pretend that this was a well thought out trap and not complete luck. It was a great fight, two warriors with honor and skill. Well, that's what's going in the history textbook. I found some eyes of Ender and made sure to collect the bookshelves. Is he riding a dolphin? My first attempt at getting to the top deck failed, but I'll just get there on my second attempt. On my third attempt. On my fourth attempt. On my fifth attempt. See? Told you. Maybe if we weren't all trying to murder each other, this would have gone smoother. Eventually, there were only two skeletons left, and they were having the most intense battle of their lives. In case you're wondering who won, it was the guy on the left. I hadn't actually looted the main chest in the captain's quarters, and it had some diamonds, gold, and enchanted iron boots. For some reason, I decided to clear out the remaining skeletons, even though I'll probably never come back here ever again. I sailed back home, and before long, the island and coral reef came into view. While dumping all my stuff, I heard the sound of a trident being hurled at me. I've heard people say you can give them a nautilus shell and they'll drop the trident, but it's either bedrock only, or they're lying. I was tempted to combine these two chest plates together, to get protection for, but is it really worth spending 10 levels on iron armor? No. No it's not. After that rare case of self-control, I used my last piece of silver to make more ammo. I replaced my white bed with a red one I'd stolen from the skeleton ship, cause you can't beat the classics. Day 12, I crafted a new iron axe cause it was time to go gather wood for my house. I almost immediately ran into an ocean monument and swerved around it, cause 5 minutes of mining fatigue would be about as fun as my old economics class. I came across a spruce ship, which was exactly what I wanted to find. Sadly, the crew wasn't health and safety trained, which led to a small accident. After collecting the usual iron blocks and enchanted golden apple, I started work on the ship. If these things weren't made of solid logs, I'd definitely be struggling. Once the ship resembled a destroyed shoebox, my work was done. I found another skeleton pirate ship, but I decided not. To not loot it? That sounded way better in my head. I had a proper 1v1 against the captain, missed a lot of crits, but still whooped him. I got some ender pearls, a sharpness 3 book, and some more eyes of ender. And we can't forget the bookshelves. I made a hole in the ceiling in order to get to the chest above and then made my escape. Even though there's water everywhere, I still managed to take full damage. There was an island close by, as well as a huge fossil, which I'll definitely be defacing later. I called this island Banana Island in my notes, because let's be honest, it kind of does look like a banana. Anyway, I took the opportunity to finally gather sand that wasn't 20 feet underwater. I shoveled sand on Banana Island all night. I paid a visit to the fossil and it was even bigger than I thought. Judging by the advancement I got, it's safe to say it's the remains of a giant shark. Its head was buried under a mountain of sand and because there's no reward for getting it out, it's gonna stay that way. Did sharks evolve to have RGB lighting, or did I miss a page? I had to swim around the ribcage, your typical family fun, and then made my way over to these ships for more family fun. The wife and kids especially loved the robbery. I looted some decent treasure from this ship and then made my way to the back to collect the rest. I picked the wrong spot and accidentally destroyed the food supply, but I'm sure I'll never face the consequences of my actions. Oh look, the consequences of my actions. Usually I don't get hit a lot while stealing, which makes me forget that I'm basically wearing cardboard armor. I went back on board a changed man and immediately made the same mistake again. After fighting like Stuart Little by going for the ankles, I finally made the right decision and kept my distance. And what was the loot I nearly died over? Some diamonds, not bad, but fire protection armor? Quartz? I went over to this nearby island feeling sad. Not only had I lost my totem, I'd lost it over armor somehow worse than what I was currently wearing. I crafted a shield to fill the totem-sized void in my heart and then headed over to this raft. Wow, raw fish! I always wanted salmonella. I remembered that you can actually dig for treasure on these islands, and after evicting the owner from his own property, I actually found some. It wasn't exactly world-class loot, but I was kind of in a treasure-hunting mood, so I went back to this island to take a look. It was a pretty long look. 
I've ruined another local ecosystem, but still couldn't seem to find any chests. Instead of giving up and going to sleep, I decided I was going to conquer another spruce ship. Those shark monsters, which are called thrashers by the way, just found that out. They were close. I really wanted to loot this chest, but I had negative inventory space at this point. I watched this orca bonk himself on the ship, and then began trying to decide what to throw out. I sacrificed some of the premium banana island sand and took the silver. I made some ammo, and I was back in business. I had my get out of jail free card restored too, so I was in a great mood. As I left the ship, I got an advancement, and apparently I've been blessed with orca's might. You really couldn't have done that two minutes earlier. I ended up returning because I'd forgotten to actually collect any wood. I really wanted to get enough materials to build my base because we're on day 14 and I still don't have walls or a roof or any of the components that make up a house. My iron axe was on the verge of death, but I gave him an inspiring speech about friendship. Well, he was a side character. I cleared out my inventory and ended up tossing my compass into the sea because, yeah, I never had any idea how to use it. I replaced the iron axe with a diamond one and it was like going from a Nokia to an iPhone 11. After putting half a pirate ship in my inventory, I set out to find more. I made a beeline for this acacia boat and the thing is with acacia is that you either like it or you absolutely despise it. Usually I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole while wearing a hazmat suit, but I wanted to give it a chance at least. Do you want to hear something about palm wood that's going to completely ruin your perception of it for the rest of the video? I hope you didn't say no, because I'm going to tell you anyway. It kind of resembles cinnamon rolls. You're denying it, but you know it's true. I found one of the larger pirate ships and didn't want to spend too much time looting it. I headed inside, grabbed the goods and dipped. I collected some more bright orange wood and saw a skeleton pirate ship, which I didn't loot. I was more interested in this ship that I'd never seen before. I climbed aboard, ready for the standard cakewalk, and then a boss bar appeared. <laughs> Captain Stashu, wow, your parents must have really hated you. Nice bottles of enchanting, they're mine now. I'd blocked off the stairs so I was free to explore as I pleased and steal as I pleased. I peeked below deck and realized... I'm in danger. I'm a man wearing tinfoil against Stashu's team of Navy SEALs, although they all share one brain cell and ended up shooting each other. I managed to get rid of the spawners at the front, but there were still plenty of pirates, more spawners at the back, and Stashu himself to deal with. I was able to craft a single silver ingot and used it to make ammo. The only thing I could really do to fight the pirates was by making them shoot each other. I got my first look at the captain and he looks like a statue for sure. I got my first hit on him, but it's going to take a lot more than that to bring this guy down. He also got shot by his own crew, which I thought was pretty funny. I ate a cannonball to the face and then got knocked off the ship, which made me realize something. There's a massive hole in Stashu's ship and he's up against Mosey, master of Stuart Little Taijun. With my legendary ankle chopping technique, I decimated Stashu and his crew. I wanted to blow this creeper up to finish him off, but it didn't want to cooperate. Any last words? Just kidding, I don't care. The only problem with killing Stashu in the water was that his entire fortune now rested on the ocean floor. Or at least, I thought it did, but it had actually floated up to the surface. The crew was having a mutiny over the treasure, and I got caught in the crossfire. One of the pirates actually dropped his cannon, but it uses silver blocks for ammo, so it's complete overkill. The back of the ship was packed with valuables, but there was one last spawner I hadn't been able to break. Worst of all, it was for the cannon pirates, which are by far the most likely to turn you into an involuntary organ donor. I dropped down some sand, which finally got me close enough to get rid of the spawner. From here, I was expecting some nice easy target practice. That was not what I got. I had about one second to react before I became a pile of ashes and swallowed an enchanted golden apple whole. My helmet and leggings had broken, and my chest plate and boots were basically scrap metal. But what does a man without tinfoil do? He upgrades to solid diamond, and then nearly dies anyway. But using a cannon inside a ship is ranked at number 7 on the things you shouldn't do with cannons list. The pirates had taken huge collateral damage, and all I had to do was finish the job. I did all that for coconuts? Thankfully, Stashu hadn't invested his whole fortune into coconuts, and had a decent pile of treasure. These blocks of silver meant I would finally be able to craft a decent amount of ammo for my pistol. There were also a couple chests up front. Something was bothering me though. When Stashu died, he'd said something about a sea monster. I'd had a good time out at sea committing various crimes, but my inventory was full and I wanted to start work on my house. While I had thrown away my compass, I knew the general direction of the UK. I boarded the spruce ship and was like, this is my property. These guys were like, no it's not, it's our property. 
And then they mysteriously died and I inherited the ship. As I rode back, I thought about the fact that I'm trying to be the best pirate of the seven seas, yet I go around in a wooden bathtub. I'll have to sort that out in the future. Eventually some landmarks came into view, like this ship I vandalised and the ocean monument. I was so happy to finally get back to the UK. Said no one ever. My parrot was pleased to see me, still haven't named him yet by the way, and of course there was Banjo. I dumped as much stuff as I could into my chest, but they were starting to get really, really full. I needed more cobblestone before I could start building and made my way into my mine. I dropped the staircase down a level so that I wouldn't get severe head trauma every time I walk up it. While mining, I came across this random piece of obsidian. It turned out there was a small flooded cave here and I had to make a choice. What flavor of G Fuel should I order while mining obsidian? Using code MOSI for 10% off of course, link in the description. Shameless product placement aside, I did actually manage to get all the obsidian I needed. I continued mining and... Brilliant. I explored the cave I'd just run into, but there was none of the blue we all know and love. Well, there was some blue, just slightly less loved. I was gonna head back to the surface, but I decided no. I'm gonna be a Karen. I'm not leaving until I see diamonds or the manager. <laughs> yeah, I, I gave up pretty quickly. It was nice to finally be out in the sun again, and I wasted no time throwing several hundred tons of stone in the furnace. Instead of wasting my coal, I harnessed the power of natural energy. What, just because I throw things in the ocean constantly doesn't mean I don't care about the environment? I can't believe you'd assume that. Gotta start your house off with a plan. Always start with a plan. That you change a thousand times because you aren't happy with it. I also realized I picked up Bad Omen 3 from killing Stashu and I can't get milk so I can't get rid of it. I love future problems. Unfortunately, the sacred sign was in the way of the build so I had to move it. If I'd remembered to turn on replay mod, we could have had a nice little time lapse, but I didn't so we just have first person some footage. I got attacked by a drowned wielding a seashell, so you can probably guess how that went. Considering how scarce wood is, it was not exactly smart to build the entire thing out of spruce logs. I was still building on day 19 and I was going all in on wasting wood. I'm talking stairs, I'm talking slabs, I'm talking trapdoors. Like a ridiculous amount of trapdoors. I burned through even more of my dwindling supply by crafting a ton of chests for my new storage system. That's right, I'm gonna actually organize all my stuff. I realized I had an entire a pile of bamboo just lying around and started planting it. I'm no gardener but surely planting it in the sand shouldn't work. I needed sticks for item frames and after bone mealing a ton of bamboo I was able to make two two item frames. I needed way more materials for the roof, so the top is going to have to stay flat for a while. I hung up this banner I stole from a statue and made a pair of diamond boots. But money doesn't bring happiness. Shh. I spent all night trying to make a simple staircase because apparently I was suffering from staircase disease. It's where you can't build a staircase. Anyway, I began digging out a basement. Houses in the UK don't have basements, but then again, houses in the UK look nothing like what I've built. My capability to waste wood was at an all-time high because I decided to trim this place out in dark oak. I then had to use spruce slabs for the floor in order to save resources and still ended up not having enough. I began organizing my storage and then realized I'd literally rather do anything else, so I ended up procrastinating with some fishing. But I got bored pretty quickly and went back to organizing my stuff. Day 21 began with a rainbow which honestly looked amazing. I needed bookshelves for an enchanting table which meant I needed wood. I could have already made bookshelves by now if I hadn't spent my wood budget on aesthetics. Also if anyone watching this video likes birch wood let us all know in the comments. We will bully you. I headed over to some of my old crime scenes in order to do more crime. The garden was a test run. Now I'm taking the house. I spotted this acacia boat in the distance, which gave me the idea to add a second floor to my house in the future. It's me, Carl, chill, chill. I collected up the wood and despite me not even having a roof, I was already making plans for a master bedroom and a jacuzzi. I slowly rode across the ocean and came across a ruined portal, which didn't have much to offer besides a flint and steel. I came across a pirate ship and I pity these fools. I'm in full diamond armor. They don't stand a chance. While I waited for my bruised ego to recover, I went around the ship collecting this crimson wood. It's a nice shade of purple. But now, it's time for murder. I kinda wish I'd let them live longer, they might have had more stuff for me to steal. I spent some time collecting this oak wood from the mast, cause even though it's more basic than eating cornflakes for breakfast, I think I can put it to good use. I spent a while searching for my boat, before realizing this drowned was trying to take it for a spin. His head was at a 90 degree angle, so he was probably having trouble steering 
spring. My thirst for wood continued and I cut down these palm trees. I dug for treasure with my fist instead of my shovel and actually ended up finding some. I didn't pay much attention to this outpost seeing as I just collected plenty of palm wood, but I did stop to grab the loot. I got myself some more acacia and I guess it's time to break in this diamond armor. Blocks off the stairs like the 200 IQ tactical mastermind strategist that I am and then started stealing. Guys, it's part of the strategy, come on. This time, I was up against Captain Roger. He should really find a more secure place to store his god apple. His crew was just as badly trained as statues, and they started a mutiny almost immediately. With the spawners at the front gone, I moved on to the back, and things went way smoother than last time. I realized I could get rid of the final spawner from behind, which meant I could avoid nearly losing my organs. Unfortunately, the boat was still teeming with pirates, not to mention Roger himself. But with my diamond armor, I was still nearly dying. There's a hole in my lungs, but I'll sleep it off. I took a cannonball to the face and continued to try fight the horde. I did this very calmly, as you can see. I still hadn't seen Roger yet. Progress was slow and painful, but I whittled down the pirates. Oh, there's Roger. Hey, Roger. How's the kids? Ow! Ow! I started fighting him on the stairs, but this guy doesn't mess around. But I have something Roger doesn't. A ridiculous amount of golden fruit and an endless appetite. His health bar began to dwindle, and soon it was almost over. He was shouting that Captain Albrecht and Captain Agmer would avenge him, but really? I'm supposed to be scared of a guy named Albrecht. I jumped down to finish the rest of the pirates off, but there were more than I thought. After getting my five a day purely from apples, I made friends with everyone, and there were smiles all around. Roger for some reason kept a diamond block on him, as well as a totem of undying he forgot to use. The treasure was amazing, as you can probably tell. It was a good day for my bank account. Unlike Statue's ship, Roger's wasn't getting left in pristine shape. I took the front, the back, the sides, and all three of the masts. I was in dire need of a resupply considering how much wood I'd used on my house. Roger, you're dead, go away. I definitely should have gone home at this point. I mean, I had more than enough wood for the bookshelves, plus a ton of loot. But I like robbing people, so I'll stay a bit longer. Although, after struggling to fit the wood from this raft into my inventory, I realized I should probably go back. All I really had to do was follow the trail of destruction. The UK came into sight, and it is definitely a sight, I'll put it that way. I put my items away properly for the first time, thanks to the new storage system. I crafted a way better pistol, as well as plenty more ammo. It does a lot more damage than the previous one, just with a longer cooldown. I procrastinated long enough and began moving the rest of my items into the new storage. Aside from being a lot easier to find stuff, I now no longer have a chest embedded into my house. Thanks to the two captains I defeated, I was now sitting on 68 levels. I turned all this palm wood into planks, which I used to make bookshelves. I turned all this crimson wood into planks, which I used to make bookshelves. I built the library and added a grindstone before crafting an enchantment table. Also, every time I try to go through this door, I end up going up the ladder, and that's definitely not going to annoy me more and more as time goes on. My diamond tools were starting to look like something out of an elderly couple's shed, and I made a new set. Imagine if this was only on breaking 3, that would really suck. Alright, thanks Minecraft. I got efficiency for on my axe, efficiency for on my pickaxe, and enchanted my old pick in order to combine it with the new one. I got sharpness 3 on my sword, and then demonstrated my horrible lack of brain cells by making a brand new helmet and chest plate. I had an anvil, I could have just repaired my current ones. I got protection 4 and aqua affinity on my helmet, which was amazing, protection 3 on my leggings, and it was at this point I remembered I owned an anvil. After some quick repairs, I got protection 4 on my chest plate and boots and made a second pair of boots in order to get depth strider. I combined the two pairs together as well as my two pickaxes. I named my new tool Pickastly and I'm sure he'll never let me down. After trying and failing to get enchantments for my pistols, I harvested all my bamboo and made sticks. I was gonna craft the final item frames but I genuinely couldn't find my leather anywhere. I searched all my chests, but once you start looking in your wood chest for your leather, it's probably gone. I made a quick trip down to my mine to grab some obsidian. Now that I had efficiency 5, I felt unstoppable. I wish my legs had efficiency 5, that'd be nice. After climbing up my staircase and punching bricks for some reason, I began building my nether portal. You know I had to flex with all four corners. I wonder what biome I'll spawn in. Maybe the crimson forest, maybe the nether waste, or the worst biome in the game. 
To make matters worse, this blue thing started hurling his children at me. And now they're orphans. I decided to make the best of my atrocious spawn and started looking for a fortress. I mined up some quartz with Pick Astley and made my way through the wasteland. I played this really fun game called Jump Down and Try Not To Die. So far, I'm winning. I did some illegal poaching and ended up stumbling across a bastion. I towered up, but I was going to need to be careful here. If I took my own advice for once, then maybe my life expectancy would be above 20. I cleared out most of the piglin brutes, but I could still hear them everywhere. The reward was worth it though. I do love ancient debris. This ghast was just trying to enjoy a nice lava bath, and I ruined his day. I definitely ruined his day. This bastion was a treasure bastion, which meant I was more than happy to risk the entire playthrough just for the loot. I got jump scared when I heard this piglin take full damage, but I was fine. I quickly lightened up when I realized just how useful the pirate pistol could be. Not only does it one-shot piglins, it also has massive knockback. What are you doing? With my enemies now residing at the bottom of this lava pool, I was able to collect their possessions without any trouble. Without much trouble. I found another piece of ancient debris and then saw myself out. There was no one to escort me out because A, everyone was dead, and B, this place is rated one star on Google Maps. I found these soul vulture things and they were incredibly annoying. I gave up trying to hit this gas fireball back and just shot it instead. I was still holding out hope for a nether fortress, but there was still no sign of one. Also, these shades were not helping. The locals only spoke pig, but eventually a familiar structure came into view. Getting to the fortress wasn't easy, but me and Pick Astley didn't give up. I began the cycle of killing blazes and getting barbecued. Usually it takes me forever to find a nether wart room, but this time things went smoothly. That's definitely all my good luck gone for the year. I was trying to find a blaze spawner and it was not going well. Luckily there was a party on the roof, which I immediately gate crashed. As a community, have we never questioned why nether fortresses have horse equipment? I fought a few wither skirtons before finally coming across a blaze spawner. I heard more blazes nearby and it turned out there was a second spawner around the corner. I started digging a tunnel to see if I could connect them. After a lot of mining and a lot of getting set on fire, I managed to link them up. If I was good at redstone and actually cared, then I could probably make a decent farm out of this, but I'm just here for the bare minimum. Once I had all the blaze rods I needed, I headed into this nearby warped forest to cut down some trees. What a surprise. This was the first time I'd encountered an unlimited supply of wood and I made sure to collect as much as I could possibly carry. With my deforestation of hell complete, I began making my way back to the portal. Which was easier said than done. Yeah, this time I'm hitting the fireball back. Um, how? How? There we go. I was pretty much lost at this point, but at least I was close to the Basalt Delta. These guys asked me what my favorite food was, and I <laughs> said bacon. Probably shouldn't have done that. I continued to push through the nether, having a good time parkouring around. Then I had to bridge across this fiery pit of doom, and that wasn't quite as fun. Eventually, I made it over, caught fire, and found my portal. It was good to finally be back in the sun. I'd used up all my ammo clearing that bastion and had to make more. I crafted a diamond fishing rod because that's a thing in this mod pack and put it to good use. Even enchanted it. You might have noticed that my food supply is down to 10 cooked cod. I hadn't set up any farms and only had one chicken, so besides stealing, this was my only real way to get food. But I couldn't believe my eyes when my idol showed up. It was Mr. Krabs, in the flesh. I'm having a boat ride with Mr. Krabs. But the best part of the night was yet to come. By cooking the jellyfish I'd caught in a furnace, I could get slime for leads. I made the leads, used the leads to make sails, and then combined the sails with three spruce boats to make my new vessel. Day 30, the moment had finally arrived. And just look at this bad boy. I dropped down the sails and the speed. Oh my days, the speed. And you know what else? It even has storage. This is by far the best thing I've ever crafted. I wanted to start a mob grinder for a number of reasons, mainly for bones and gunpowder. I only had a couple stacks of cobblestone to my name and I'm going to need a lot more than that. I ended up finding a ravine and started to explore. And when this skeleton dropped down out of nowhere, I had no reaction. That's never going to happen again. I wasn't really making any progress towards collecting cobblestone and started carving out an area in my strip mine. I got a decent amount of blocks, probably not enough, but it's not a mosey video if I don't run out of materials at least once. I had some sand lying around and spent a while cleaning up areas that no one but me will see or care about. I then started making a bridge because I want this cobblestone box of a farm to be as far away from my island as possible. I started construction, but before long I found something 
well, someone who I was least expecting, a zombie villager. And while he was quickly 360ing his way to the bottom of the ocean, I knew I had to save him. I didn't have long before he drowned and dug a tunnel as fast as I could. He did start biting me, but I'll forgive him. I trapped him in a boat to prevent him from despawning, and now I have a future prisoner, a friend. I continued working on the mob farm and made sure I built the water channels at the correct length. Last time I made a mob farm, I messed it up, and what followed were the most painful 10 minutes of my life. Life. I also fell off, which was completely intentional. I just wanted to do a swan dive. I swear, there are actually some time lapses in this video. I zoned out again and forgot to turn on replay mod. It doesn't even matter though, because within 15 minutes of starting this project, I'd run out of materials. It's fine, it's fine. I love staring at rocks all day. I kind of wish I'd added a construction equipment mod. This would have been a lot easier if I had a bulldozer. I put this mod pack together myself, and if this video hits 10,000 likes, I'll upload it to Curse I'd definitely gone insane at this point because I started smacking my fish against the stairs. I needed a bunch of trapdoors for the farm, but thanks to all the wood I collected from the nether, I could easily afford them. This farm should be pretty effective considering I'm in the ocean. Half the caves are flooded, so it saves me having to light them up. I shot a jellyfish because I hate them and went to check up on... uh... Dave. Yeah, Dave. With the water added in, the only thing left was the roof. I'm sure I have enough materials to finish. I didn't. I didn't have anywhere near enough. I did another swan dive off the top and picked up a zombie's corpse. Lovely. All this mining was starting to wear down Picassley, and if I wasn't careful, he'd end up saying goodbye. If I don't have enough cobblestone this time, I'm gonna eat my shoes. Luckily, my shoes didn't end up in my digestive system, and the farm was complete. I turned off the lights, tried to be efficient with my torches, and ended up spamming them everywhere. I waited for some mobs to spawn, but nothing was showing up. I was slightly worried that I just spent an hour making a cobblestone behemoth that doesn't even work, but eventually the enemies started to trickle in. I looked longingly at my wheat seeds, but I was going to need a ton of bone meal before I could start a huge field. Seeing as it was day 34 and there was still no sign of a wandering trader, I got rid of this platform. I had enough bamboo for the foreseeable future and decided to fully harvest what I had. The mob farm finally started to produce some decent numbers. Even though I didn't have that much bone meal, I decided to start a farm anyway. And yeah, I'm gonna try make it look nice. I crafted a diamond hoe because we're long past using iron and got to work. I planted the few seeds that I had and injected them with testosterone. Wait, that's not what you should be using to grow crops. Now that I was over level 30, I decided to enchant a new sword. Just kidding, I enchanted a fishing rod and got on breaking three. Why am I like this? And I also combined it with my other one. Mr. Krabs was crying about not having any money, so I gave him an emerald, except it bounced off his head. Some guy was also chilling in my house, but when you have two entrances and neither of them have a door, it's not exactly surprising. I needed more bone meal, so I alternated between fishing and murder. I set out in my new boat in order to find more food and wood, and I also wanted to track down those other pirates Roger mentioned. I found a spruce and dark oak raft, which I immediately cannibalized, including the bright pink sail. I was not expecting this to go so smoothly. Wait, hold on a second. Statue? You should definitely be in the afterlife. I forgot to block the stairs and was expecting a huge battle, but these guys just killed each other. I couldn't be bothered to deal with Stashu and spent a while destroying a sail and looting his stuff. I was feeling pretty confident about the fight and put my pistols in dual wield mode. It doesn't get much better than fighting an undead pirate and his army of goons. Sadly, I started to run low on ammo, which meant I had to bring out my sword. I'm your best friend and that's why you're gonna drop me your trident. Oh come on, how did that not work? Stashu and what was left of his crew rushed at me and this guy clearly did not want a repeat of last time. But it wasn't me that killed him this time, it was his own stupidity. He literally blew himself up. Now that Stashu had gone out with a bang, I'll see myself out. Now that Stashu was gone, I mopped up the rest of the crew, almost dying multiple times in the process. It was so nice of him to come back to life and get all this treasure for me. I loaded up Shirley, yes, that is what I'm calling this boat from now on, with treasure, and then happily got to work destroying Stashu's ship. It might seem pointless now, but when I need netherite, this wool is going to be a lifesaver. And of course, we can't forget about the oak wood. It's such a small detail, but I noticed that when Shirley has a ton of items, these mini chests appear at the front, and that's adorable. I did some more exploring, broke some spawners, broke some bones, and booked a hospital appointment. I got this really cool shot of the sun setting as I sailed along, and it made me feel like I was part of a movie. 
Wait, hold on a second. I boarded this pirate ship and scooped up their possessions with my loot goblin hands. I was out of there within 30 seconds. I also found out you can zoom out the camera on the boat, which is actually really cool. Can I interest you in some car insurance? I'm gonna keep staring at you until you buy it. I found a second shark fossil and this one actually had a visible head and visible loot even if it was kind of bad. I found an acacia boat and the one pirate on board had no chance of keeping his property. It's standard stuff, take the wood, take the sail and disappear before the cops show up. I can't emphasize enough how useful Shirley's storage was. Usually half this stuff would have ended up at the bottom of the ocean but now I can actually keep it all. I'd been looking for a spruce ship the entire journey and finally found one. The size of my boat meant this drowned looked like a 7 year old whose parents accidentally left him in the car. Day 38 I was chopping wood again. That second floor of my house isn't going to appear out of thin air, although I really wish it would. I mean this is a crime but is it really a crime when there's no government to stop me? I stopped off at this island and instead of breaking the spawner I decided to fight whatever it produced. It spawned a guy. I found a puffer fish in this chest and while I despise these things, I decided to do what was right and set it free. Did you just poison me? Right, welcome to natural selection. You deserve that, you stupid yellow bowling ball. I started heading home, only stopping for one more episode of British Man Kills Things and Chops Wood. It's a great show, but Netflix cancelled it in order to make the 35th season of Grey's Anatomy. I arrive back home and I'm not gonna lie, this treasure chest is starting to look pretty stacked. And the wood chest, don't even get me started on the wood chest. I had 52 levels and instead of enchanting another fishing rod, I actually used them like a mentally stable person. Progress. I spent a lot of levels trying to get a better sword and got one that was almost perfect. But it had knocked back so it's going in the grindstone. I wanted to combine these two helmets together but my main priority was a sword. I decided to work on it later and instead went for sharpness 5. My mob grinder still wasn't as fast as I wanted it to be so I went on a mission to light up the nearby caves. All I had to do was dig towards the sounds of monsters and sooner or later I'd hit a cave. This one was terrible but that's besides the point. Because everything was mostly flooded, I'd find these tiny pockets of dry land absolutely crammed with enemies. I came across a geode that had a ton of amethyst, amethyst? Purple crystals, it had them and I collected them. I also collected this copper which I wanted to build with at some point but will just end up throwing in a chest and never touching again. As I returned to the surface it was incredibly depressing to see my house be absolutely dwarfed by a cobblestone mob farm. It was even more depressing to find out Mr. Krabs had left. You'd never leave me right Banjo? Right? I lit up another geode and was gonna sleep but I could hear a skirton somewhere. I slowly caused the entire island to crumble as I hunted for one singular skeleton. Why? Just why? I also tried to fill in the hole with sand, which is by far the dumbest thing I've ever done. After patching up the UK, I went over to my mob grinder and saw another zombie villager. I broke him out, grabbed a boat and managed to trap him. He needs a name. Mm. Dave too. With all those caves now lit up, the mob farm was working a lot better than it used to. I also replaced this dirt with cobble because it was making the grinder somehow look worse than usual. I found a potato that must have been dropped by a zombie and added it to my field. I needed a spider eye and spiders don't die in the farm much thanks to their ability to climb. So I had to make them die. I crafted my first brewing stand but I needed glass for bottles so I went to the mines to collect fuel. I wanted to make weakness potions in order to cure Dave and Dave too, which is my first step towards world domination, I mean towards creating a happy, thriving community. Seeing as my mob grinder was now producing more than 3 items a day, I had enough bone meal to grow all the crops and fill out the farm. I made a fermented spider eye using sugar I'd stolen from a skeleton ship and a brown mushroom I'd picked in the nether. While I waited for the weakness potions to brew, I began expanding the farm. Well, I added a nice path, but I did actually make a section for potatoes. A bit of bone meal and a fortune pickaxe go a long way. Now I I can finally feed myself without stealing. The potions were ready but before I cured the villagers I made sure I had plenty of ammo. I was still cursed with bad omen 3 and once they were cured a raid would instantly begin. Day 42 had barely begun and they were already cured. I was gonna go witness the birth of civilization but I kinda wanna build a roof before I get sent to my grave by a vindicator. Is the roof super overcomplicated? Yes. Does it use way too much wood just for a roof? Yes, sounds perfect. 
The oak wood layer was easy to complete thanks to how much I had lying around, but the spruce was another story. The slabs were fine, but the solid layer of logs obliterated my supply. It is looking pretty cool though. Even though I couldn't finish the final layer, I was at least able to add in the slabs. I wanted this part to be a little more emphasised and steep than the others. I continued working on the roof the next day, but eventually I'd done all that I could with the materials on hand. I made a lectern and headed down to see Dave and Dave too. Surprisingly, nothing happened. Well, I guess the raiders aren't coming. Dave and Dave too. Welcome to paradise. Oh, here we go. I headed over to my house to see where the raiders were coming from before realizing they were coming from my house. A few of them walked straight through my nether portal never to be seen again, and before long I had apparently already lost. I'm fairly sure what happened was that the raiders couldn't find any villagers and thought, wow, the only person here is this random pirate. Let's find somewhere else. A couple of the raiders were still hanging out in my house, but tourists are banned. Now that the raid, if you can even call it a raid, was over, it was time to get a librarian to sell me mending. Just gotta get them out, nice and easy, of course. Dave too was gonna have to be the librarian because regular Dave was a nitwit, which is just villager speak for useless member of society. He spent the night doing absolutely everything except being a librarian, but eventually he was like, okay, fine, I'll sell you mending. I'd spent all night near the mob spawner and it was overflowing with enemies. I grabbed some emeralds and books and then bought 12 mending books. Knowing my track record, I'm not expecting Dave 2 to live to day 100, so I needed to stock up. I combined mending and thorns 3 and put mending on pick Astley. I swear the entire Minecraft community despises thorns, and I genuinely don't get why. I mean, yeah, it's annoying sometimes, but I'd argue the pros outweigh the cons. I equipped myself with some doors and then stopped to try and figure out what this thing was. You know, I'm not sure, but I think it's a giraffe. I began gathering sand as I watched this drowned attempt to fight a fish. Wait, the fish actually won? I thought I'd help out and contributed by bullying. I continued to collect sand, which took a while with my efficiency one shovel. Can I have your trident? Oh, he actually dropped it. Once I have the levels, I'll be turning this into a weapon of mass destruction. In order to start my capitalist empire, I needed a villager breeder, which is why I shoveled all that sand. I was going to build a small island, but the more I thought about it, the more it sounded like effort. And I don't want to put in effort, but to the shock of everyone, and I mean everyone, I remembered to turn on replay mod. I started out by building a dock because that was 10 times easier than trying to make an entire island from scratch. I started making the area for the breeder and then ran out of wood so I had to make a quick side trip to a nearby island. I used barrels for the foundations which was a mistake, you'll see why later on, and then made some beams from dark oak. Initially I tried using acacia for the walls but it looked too similar to my house. I used warped wood instead and I actually really like it, I should start using it more often. Also funny story, I wanted the roof to be made out of spruce wood. Do you know what material I don't have any of? Sponge, but also spruce wood. I added this railing all around the breeder, not because I care about the villagers safety in any way, but because I like the small details. I shot a jellyfish because he deserved it for existing and added some dark oak fences to these wooden pillars. It looked really bad, they just looked like string cheese. Started off day 48 with some murder and then finished up the railing. The wool supply was starting to pay off and seeing as this is magenta, it's most likely from Stashu's ship. Imagine being a pirate feared the world over and then some random guy uses your safe for bed sheets. The villager breeder had almost everything it needed apart from, you know, villagers. Getting these two up to the surface was gonna be a massive challenge, is what I would say if I didn't have the power of science. After dropping down some sand to create a temporary chute, I dug straight down and broke right into the, the Dave residency, I don't know. By using the completely logical ability of science to block the water, and using kelp to turn all the flowing water into water sources, I now had a bubble elevator. I wasn't about to let the virgins walk free because what do I look like, a generous person? The mob grinder had once again filled up so I cleared that out and then saw I had a visitor. I don't really want a visitor. Night had fallen and I didn't want to start moving Dave and Dave 2 until morning, just in case anything went wrong. Instead, I decorated the dock with some barrels, fruit, and crafting tables, because I couldn't think of anything else. I got attacked by phantoms, which is usually really annoying, but I have a pistol, this never gets old. 
I decided it was finally time to sort out those missing item frames. I had so many mending books, I used one to label my chest of enchanted books, which pretty much only contained mending books. It was time for the moment of truth. Could I transport two individuals, one of which has brain cells in the single digits, and the other one who's called Dave? He doesn't have any. I had to persuade him to go in the bubble elevator, and when he reached the top, he had no idea what to do. I trapped him in a boat and we began our journey. Moving 30 blocks in a boat had never been more difficult, but eventually I got him in and now I just had to do it one more time. Not gonna lie, it's really fun watching them fly up the elevator. Everyone was in place and there were smiles all round. I think. These guys don't really show any emotions. I didn't have a use for the bubble column anymore and blocked it off before harvesting all my potatoes. If I was going to get an easily exploitable population, I was going to need a lot of crops. As I was planting some seeds, I found a knockoff Mr. Krabs. He'll never replace the original, but he's better than nothing. I was going to donate 7 months of food to the villagers, but they were fast asleep with their eyes wide open. Oh well, might as well head to bed myself. Hello? Can you hear me? Is this thing working? Hello? That dream was so weird. I crafted some smokers and killed some jellyfish to take my mind off things. I wanted to cook some potatoes, so I paid a quick visit to the lava pool. Lava cooked potatoes, my signature dish. I hurled food at Dave and Dave 2 and then headed over to the mob grinder. Or is that what I think it is? A future worker. Citizen. I covered up the entrance to my mine with a trapdoor and finally began adding some stairs. Now this is luxury. I needed more villagers before I could start my master plan, so I kind of just had to wait. I wanted more dirt in order to expand my potato production, so I began digging up this island. I even found a treasure chest with a pirate spader. After destroying the island beyond recognition, I sailed back home with Shirley and realized I should probably light up the roof of my house. Yeah, this is a problem. I placed down some torches to stop any more unwanted guests and cleared out my mob spawner. I really need more levels. I harvested my crops and then jumped on the farmland. I did that because I wanted to make a better looking path. I'm not insane, I swear. I did actually add that dirt from yesterday and used it to make a much bigger field of potatoes, as well as adding another row of stairs to the temple entrance. These children are going to be the key to my empire. Ah, must have been the wind. I was still obsessed with making this farm look absolutely perfect and added a completely pointless dark oak fence. I was slowly gaining levels, but it was taking forever. The villagers now had their own police force, but that's fine. I'll get rid of him later. I set out on Shirley in search of the remaining pirate captains. If I defeated one of them, I'd be swimming in XP. Yeah, it's not for a noble cause. I just want to be rich. Oh, this is your raft. Are you sure? Well, he changed his mind, probably because he's dead, but let's not nitpick. Before long, the familiar shape of a captain's ship came into view. I tried to board and immediately got attacked. I think eh, we just got off on the wrong foot. You got me explosives for Christmas. You shouldn't have. No, like really, why would you leave these out? I was dealing with Captain Albrecht, and as far as I can tell, he's not the brightest. Although he is the first one to actually trap his chest, this poison was incredibly annoying. This is about to be such a good prank, they'll never see it coming. Okay, why is it not falling down? Things were going pretty well. Until they weren't, I could barely hear myself think over the sound of 20 pistols firing at once. I shoved in golden apples as I was on my deathbed and absolutely booked it for the stairs. I should not have survived that. I got my first look at Albrecht and his strategy was to sit there and die. How did this guy become a captain? He also dropped virtually no XP, so thanks Albrecht. I'm so glad I risked my life trying to fight you. I had plenty of TNT and spent a while blowing stuff up and getting launched 40 feet in the air. Multiple times. Also, you'd think I'd have learned my lesson with this ledge, but no. I hadn't. It took a while, but eventually all the pirates and random creepers have been dealt with. I collected the usual blocks, but more importantly, I found a silk touch book as well as some name tags. As I made my way through the ruined ship, I couldn't help but think about the name those pirates have been chanting. Agmer. Day 53, I found this child on my boat, and then I did nothing. Anyway, I stashed my loot and then got to work cutting wood. I can't just leave all this dark oak sitting here. I headed back home and, oh... I'm in mortal danger. Everyone was panicking and I was like, guys, it's fine. 
Here's a roof. Why have you picked now of all times to be difficult? Unfortunately, me building the village of Rita meant the raiders had a clear target and weren't gonna leave like last time. Thankfully, they do all need armbands to swim, which makes them a little easier to fight. They kept spawning on the mob grinder and falling off, which would have been hilarious if there wasn't a massive ocean to cushion their fall. In between waves, I took the opportunity to get some easy XP. Did he just push his mate off? Thanks to me relying on it 24-7, my pirate pistol was beginning to run out of durability. Once there was only a few raiders left in the wave, I crafted a spare. This ravager was just minding his own business, but I did what had to be done. Why am I feeling sympathy for a ravager? What is wrong with me? The waves had so far come from the top of my mob farm, but the next one was right on my doorstep. Well, I don't really have a doorstep, but you get the idea. A pillager was trying to use knockoff Mr. Krabs as a hostage, but that's not happening. Happening. Night was well underway and I didn't really like the idea of getting blown up by a creeper while trying to fight off a million other enemies. As I was greeting the next group of tourists visiting the UK, I heard the sound of an evoker. I rushed in to try unalive him, but this guy's bodyguard had a bodyguard. This ravager headbutted me, so I have absolutely zero sympathy now. You deserve this. Get out the pool, we're closed. The next wave started and wow, that's one way to end your bloodline. Everyone's significant lack of swimming ability turned what was supposed to be a brutal assault into some easy target practice. Except things took a turn for the life-threatening when the raiders remembered their ability to walk. Number one rule when you're invading, don't trample on a man's potatoes it will push him over the edge. The ravages were gone, but I now had a new problem on my hands known as an entire extended family of vexes trying to kill me. Things went from bad to worse when I realized my boots were on the absolute verge of breaking. I ran to my house to try and fix them, but that clearly wasn't an option. Well, at least there's no jellyfish. Okay then. As soon as my boots broke, dealing with this many vexes would be a death sentence. There was only one thing I could do. I swam as fast as I could to Shirley and grabbed my diamonds and iron. They were still hot on my trail, so I was going to have to act fast. I crafted an anvil, chucked my boots in, and fixed them up. Let's try this again. It wasn't easy, and I took a lot of damage doing it, but slowly the army of demon babies began to fall. I was like, whoosh, and I was like, bang. Don't you dare try and summon more. This vindicator was looking lovingly at Banjo, but... But he's my best friend. There was one raider left, but I couldn't seem to find him anywhere. But after all I'd been through, I wanted that hero of the verge status. Say goodbye. Oh, there's another wave. I was trying to combine these two helmets together when I heard what sounded like really bad beatboxing. Turns out knockoff Mr. Krabs was dying because he was drying up. Wait, did I accidentally kill the original Mr. Krabs? The Vexers showed up again and got exactly what they deserved. All that was left to do was clean up these Ravagers. No hard feelings, except there are because I hate them. Not as much as the Vex though, I'll give them that. What's that? Spare you? How about no? Did a little bit of jumping around to celebrate. Get away from my KFC. I mean my friend Banjo. I sorted out my inventory, dealt with the trespasser, and checked up on the villagers. They somehow weren't dead. It was a miracle. I wanted to put these beds back, but this iron golem was just committed to causing me problems. I said fine, have it your way, and lined up the shot. Funny enough, he changed his mind. Even though I'd had to spend my hard-earned levels on repairing my boots, I still had enough for one level 30 enchantment. Always oh, on breaking three, you always gotta gamble on unbreaking three. Okay, please never listen to my advice. I did at least get riptide, which meant I could do this. That is pretty cool. This child had a trident too, but there can only be one. So he's selling one bookshelf for one emerald and one book for one emerald. Time to exploit his terrible business plan for all it's worth. I was trying to click on him and accidentally did this, and I was expecting the iron golem to start throwing hands. Except he didn't care. In fact, no one cared, but hey, I'm not complaining. I broke down the bookshelves I got from day 2 and sold the books back to him for some great profits and XP. These fishermen gave me some raw cod, but after throwing it into the ocean I saw a cat, so I immediately picked it back up. But she wasn't interested in fish and instead chose to visit hell. Well, I guess I'd better go save her. Are you, what? I made a run for it, but these gross blue things showed up at precisely the wrong moment. They knocked me into the lava, and in the moment, I decided to eat a god apple. It was complete overkill, but after stepping into the nether and finding it full of pillagers, my heart rate was not exactly at a healthy speed. After dealing with some very confused raiders and watching the cat nearly delete its own existence, I was able to tame it. She was definitely done with the nether. She walked straight to the portal. I climbed down this ladder. Ladder, climbed up the ladder, and then disenchanted my trident. 
Is this what people call YouTuber luck? I combined these books together, but didn't have quite enough levels to max out my helmet. I went to visit Dave 2 for some more profits, and this guy made a run for it. Fair play, honestly. I bought some bookshelves and then decided this guy wasn't enjoying his freedom any longer. I broke every barrel to try and stop him from becoming a fisherman, but he was like, I was born to be a fisherman. No, you were born to serve my empire, but suit yourself. I did some more scamming and also bought a luck of the sea book. I could hear a villager upstairs and it turned out this guy was now a cleric. And now he's back to square one. Pick Astley was no stranger to damage, but he was definitely starting to run out of durability. But don't worry, the mob farm can provide one zombie. Luckily, I could just take advantage of Dave too, not knowing he's in a pyramid scheme. I replanted the patch of potatoes that the ravagers had trampled and then revisited my mob farm for some more XP. But then I realised, this is a fortune pickaxe. All I had to do was mine a bunch of ores and it would just repair itself. I also needed a ton of cobblestone anyway for my next project. And glass. And villagers, but they don't know that yet. Day 57, I crafted some beds, accidentally jumped on my potatoes, felt the immense weight of regret and sorrow, and then got started on a cobblestone bridge. I made it out of slabs because I needed to be spawn proofed. And then I got started on an iron farm. I'm going to use the villagers to spawn iron golems, and then I'm going to sell the iron iron to the rest of the villagers. Wait, am I the bad guy here? Like I just said, I need villagers for the farm and would you look what we have here. I thought it was going to be really annoying to get him in, but then he was just walking straight up. It was a miracle. It was everything I'd ever dreamed of. Then he tripped and fell in the ocean. The bed's right there, just get in. It took ages, but eventually he did actually cooperate. Because villagers can barely follow simple instructions, I made a clear path for where I wanted the next one to go. Now who to pick next? This guy was taking up a whole two beds. That's a chad move, but not allowed. Getting him over to the farm was, uh, how do I put it? A massive pain. This looks like some kind of weird ritual. Instead of using the path I specifically built for him, he just went in through the top. Now I only needed one more villager. Yeah mate, you're free, don't even worry about it. You know what, you can even have a free hotel room. Just don't ask for room service. Now that everyone was in place, I returned the beds to the verger breeder. It kind of feels like a ghost town now. The only thing I was missing for the farm was a zombie, which I thought would be easy to get. Or it would be if these guys knew how to walk in a straight line, and skeletons weren't murdering the ones that could. I finally had enough levels to create the ultimate helmet, although it was on the verge of turning to dust so I did some trading to get it repaired. I also blew my money on two name tags because I forgot that I already had some. After clearing out the two mobs that were in the grinder, it was time to finish off the iron farm. I build this thing all the time, it's by Wattles, it works amazingly well. What happens is the golem's gonna spawn, end up in this chamber which is gonna be full of lava, and your imagination can probably fill out the rest. But of course, none of that's going to happen without a zombie. I put a lot of effort into thinking of a name, and then it was time for round two with the mob grinder. It went about as well as you'd expect. This is a straight bridge, why is this so hard for them? To make matters worse, all the zombies that fell into the water turned into drowned, so now they were just more annoying to deal with. The sun began to rise, and I had accomplished... Nothing. And now I have to wait another 10 minutes before it's night time. Yay. I blew off some steam by throwing potatoes at my villagers and scamming Dave too, which did make me feel a little bit better. Seeing as I had some time to kill, I decided I might as well set up a second iron farm. That's right, a second one when the first doesn't even work yet. And I built it in the wrong place, of course. Steady, steady, how? Finally, something actually went right. Night was falling, so it was time for me to try once again to get a zombie. Okay, I don't want to panic, but this might actually be the one. Not you. Now all I had to do was run across the bridge, open this trap door, and wait. It worked. It worked. It worked. So now that the mob grind is open, now everything wants to spawn. I see how it is. I got a music disc and then a full iron zombie spawned. I was kind of debating on keeping him, but he died to my thorns armor anyway. I made the most of the chaos and managed to preserve another zombie for the second iron farm. He wasn't holding an item like the other ones, so I had to use the name tag. This skeleton dropped an unbreaking three power three bow. He was stacked. I used my trident to deal with the literal army of drowned that were now inhabiting the ocean. I also tried to sleep next to a zombie and I'm not sure why I thought that would work. I needed lava for both iron farms so I collected some from the usual pool. Last time I tried to make an iron farm, I built it wrong and ended up turning the lava to obsidian multiple times. 
Thankfully, I learned from my past mistakes and this one was now fully functional. I went to the villagers to tell them the good news and they're escaping, they're escaping. Realistically, Dave, where are you gonna go? Your options are me or Agmer. Dave too had jacked up his bookshelf prices, but I bought them anyway. I'm not making any profit, but I'm still getting XP. And of course, Dave got himself stuck in the boat with the zombie and now needed me to save him. I put mending on my leggings, but I wasn't saving Dave just yet. I built the zombie chamber for the second iron farm so that I could set Dave free and not waste a name tag zombie, but there was a slight problem. I got them out the boat to try and separate them, but Dave was just being useless. See, logically, I don't need Dave anymore. I have more villagers, but I can't. I can't just kill Dave. Well, I could, but I do somewhat care about him. For some reason, the iron farm wasn't working, but then I remembered this one missing block and mmm melted iron. I got started on the second farm and also Dave had turned back to his normal self. I scammed Dave too like normal and then got back to work. I still needed to track down Agma, but first I wanted to focus on my industry. Dave had also somehow given birth and I'm just as confused as you are. I wanted to get villagers for the iron farm, but I needed to wait for them to grow up. I began taking down this old cobblestone bridge and had a trident battle with this drowned. I added mending to my boots because they were practically falling to pieces. Overall, my arm is getting pretty good. My trident was pretty bashed up, so I put mending on it and then visited Banjo. I love all my pets equally. I don't. He's the favorite. I saw all the little chests on Shirley and realized I'd never actually unloaded all of Albrecht's possessions. After some super fun and interesting organization, I made my way into the nether. Why are you here? Why are you here? The Vex changed his mind about being in the nether, probably because I shot at him, and then I began making my way through the basalt delta. By the way, who thought these blue things were a good idea? Because they're not. They're really not. You're probably wondering why I've even gone to the nether, and so was I at this point. I wanted to find Agma, but I'd explored a couple thousand blocks in every direction. You can probably see where this is going now. One block in the nether equals eight in the overworld, and I was going to use that to instantly travel to new land. Well, not really new land, because the whole world's an ocean, but you get the idea. And I spawned in a cave. Nice. I swam up and began exploring these unknown waters. And by exploring, I mean taking everything valuable in sight. Golden apple? Sure. Solid gold block? Don't mind if I do. Dark oak wood? Dark oak should be in my inventory. Ah, get it? Uh, I'm sorry. Do you remember that second floor of my house I talked about? I'm gonna use it as a trading hall. Oh, but your roof's not finished. That's not important. I spent a while trying to kill this thrasher with my trident. It took ages because I cannot throw this thing in a straight line. I found the best boat in the game, aka the spruce boat, and my gear meant it was a lot easier to clear than it used to be. I'll take some more godlike fruit. Do you think enchanted golden apples taste nice? Because I reckon they genuinely taste delicious. But that's just a theory. A game theory. I found another spruce boat and decided to leave. Of course I didn't. I gathered every single block of spruce available. As I sailed along, a ship we all know and love came into view. And sure enough, it was Agma. Terror of the Seven Seas, Destroyer of Souls, and I forgot the rest. The point is, he's bad news. Although he does have a large supply of bottles of enchanting, so credit where it's due, dealing with all those other captains meant now I was a changed man. I took out each spawner, making sure to block every hole I made. I took my time defeating the pirates and stayed well out the way of their cannons. As the gunpowder settled, there was only one man left. I've been waiting for you, Mosey. Statue, Roger and Albrecht, they couldn't defeat one pirate all on his own? Well, you want something done, do it yourself, I suppose. You're gonna lose like the rest of the magma, trust me. Lose? Me? My boy, I've roused the demon of the ocean from her slumber. Do you have any idea how powerful I'll be? That scene was Sestashi mentioned. I should have known. I, Agmer, will rule the seas and crush your pathetic island. Really? Insulting the UK? I, that's my job. There was treasure everywhere. It was like a trail of pure gold breadcrumbs. That sea monster, it can't be that bad, right? I mean, it's not like you said he would rule the ocean with it. Everything is going to be fine. I'm going to die, aren't I? With Agma gone and my inventory full of loot, I decided it was time to return to the portal and make my way home. It took me a long time to find the opening to the cave because I'm just kind of dumb. Once I was in the nether, I sniped the skeleton off my bridge before he could do the same thing to me. 
I was looking forward to a few days of relaxing. The fight with Agmir had been pretty difficult. Please no. I dealt with a few of the raiders, but then I had an idea. If I just ignore them long enough, they just leave. So here I am on day 65, casually sorting out all my loot from earlier. So you're telling me there's a task force of enemies who want to kill both me and all the villagers? Nah, surely not. Things are pretty quiet around here, I might as well work on the roof. I was actually really happy with how it turned out. I'd never built in this style before, but it came out exactly how I wanted. And I finally started building the second floor. It turns out, ghosting your mortal enemies actually works. There were still a few trespassers, and then there weren't any. There was only one pillager left, and he was definitely the main character. He dodged that, then he dodged that, but he couldn't dodge that. I wanted to put my 47 levels to good use and made a new pair of boots and a sword. I was missing feather falling as well as looting and sweeping edge. I got none of them. Actually, I did get sweeping edge, but it came with knockback, so no thank you. Even though it wasn't maxed out, I added mending to my sword and then built a ladder up to my future trading hall. I was pretty much out of spruce wood and had to use slabs as much as I could. In case you're wondering why I didn't just use the roof at the first floor for the villagers, is because hearing her and hmm all day would probably drive me to the depths of insanity. Production at the iron farm was going well but in order to exploit the economy I need an economy to exploit. I crafted some rails and smithing tables and began building a roller coaster with no ulterior motives. Come on guys when have I ever had ulterior motives? And now the ride's complete so let's get our first willing participant. Wait 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 wait. After a lengthy health and safety lawsuit the ride was working as intended. Welcome to your new home. I hope you like it because you're gonna be here for a while. How long exactly? Well, that's for me to know and you to discover. For some reason, the other villagers didn't want to go on the roller coaster, but that's fine because they don't have a choice. After moving a few more villagers, I had a go myself. As a completely unbiased person, I rate Mosey Theme Park a 10 out of 10. Not everyone was having a great time, such as this guy who made a run for it. He was going towards my bed, and once I broke it, he was like, well, what's my life purpose then? Your purpose is to make me money. My goal was to get an entire hall full of toolsmiths who'd happily buy all my iron. At an extremely inflated price, of course. Day 69, that's not funny. I found a skeleton hanging out on my roof, so obviously I had to deal with him. What happened to my trident here? I began doing business with the toolsmiths and apparently got my first stone pickaxe. I never actually made one because I went straight to iron after robbing people. I needed to make sure all the villagers had the coal trade before they all turned into zombies. Turning into zombies? I wonder why that would happen. I threw all the stone tools into the ocean and then started brewing some water breathing potions. I blew more money on name tags because I still hadn't realized I already had some. I used them to name all my pets. Of course we got the legend himself, Banjo, but we also have Lewis the Parrot, Ridley the Cat, and Swift the other cat. You see what I mean about using barrels when building a villager breeder? It just makes everyone want to be fishermen. My water breathing potions were done, but they weren't the only things I'd be brewing. I made a fermented spider eye, and in a twist no one saw coming, I started preparing some weakness potions. I mean of course I'm gonna turn the villagers into zombies and then save their lives, how else will I get them to completely overpay for my iron? This zombie had fallen about 20 stories down the mob farm, so in order to prevent myself from accidentally killing him, I had to take off my Thorn's armor. I put him in a minecart while he was still in a boat, because apparently that's a thing, and then set him free with the villagers. It wasn't really working, they're actually surprisingly good at running away, but eventually the whole gang looked like moldy salad. I realized I was incredibly lucky that it was raining, otherwise everyone would have gone up in flames. That's right, I got zombie villagers, but forgot to build them a roof. That could have gone horribly wrong. I couldn't cure them right away because the first one to turn back would just get eaten by the others. My first idea was to separate them using minecarts. That went horribly wrong, as did my attempt to save him. I eventually got them all into boats and while it wasn't perfect, at least I could now deal with two at a time rather than five. I blocked up the hole in the mob grinder, stepped on some potatoes, stepped on more potatoes and then began curing the villagers. I can't wait to scam them. I mean, I can't wait for them to be happy and healthy. <gasps> Mr. Krabs, you came back. 
I put him on a lead and attached it to an underwater fence post which should hopefully keep him from getting stuck on land and drying up. I organised my inventory, crafted some emergency doors and made my way over to the ocean monument. I chugged a water breathing potion and broke in through the roof. The first elder guardian was really easy, he just kind of died. I tested my pistol and it works just as well underwater. That doesn't make scientific sense at all, but sure, I'll abuse it. The hardest part of an ocean monument isn't fighting the elder guardians, it's trying to make your way through several thousand corridors in order to find them. The shaders do make this place look really nice though. After finding another ancient guardian of the deep and deleting its existence, there was only one more left. It took me a while of swimming around in circles, but eventually I found it and killed it. Once the mining fatigue wore off, I began gathering sponge. Interesting, I know. I began swimming back through the maze, but then I remembered I can cheat now. After smashing my way through several walls of this sacred temple, I finally found the center and collected the hidden gold blocks. Instead of finding the exit, I made my own and then swam over to Shirley. The next morning, I grabbed all the iron from my farm, cleared out the mob grinder, and rode the roller coaster to the top of my house. That last part sounds like something a little kid would say to impress his mates on the playground. You know that one kid that was always lying? Like, yeah, my house has a roller coaster shut up. Anyway, once the villagers learned it was me that saved their lives from whatever caused them to turn into zombies, they basically began handing me emeralds. One iron for an emerald. Is, is that even legal? In order to level them up, I had to buy more stone tools and getting rid of them was easier said than done. I then moved all the cured villagers into their own section. I only had one weakness potion left, so I had to start curing these guys before I split them up. Although they just refused to separate. Every time one of them got in the boat, the other jumped straight in. Once I finally got them in their own boats, I harvested all the potatoes that I'd neglected for several weeks. I needed more workers, so I visited the bridge and then hurled raw potatoes everywhere. My treasure chest was getting pretty full so I crafted some emerald, gold and iron blocks in order to save space. You know, all I'm saying is you don't see Jeff Bezos with 104 blocks of solid gold. All the villagers were cured which meant I could free them from their boat imprisonment. I mean they're still in prison, just not in boats. I had one water breathing potion left and decided I might as well use it. That's right, I'm gathering sand really takes me back. My shovel was practically broken and it only had efficiency 1 so I just used it until it disintegrated. Rest in peace shovel, you won't really be missed cause I'm gonna make a better one literally 2 minutes after your death. I put all my sand in the furnace to get glass and then went up to the villagers to do some fair and honest trading. Like buying an enchanted diamond shovel for one emerald. I crafted a hook for my fishing rod which I turned into a gold hook to get extra luck but I couldn't just attach it normally. That would be too easy and straightforward. Instead, what I had to do was go to the depths of the mines, gather some obsidian, craft an ender chest, and by combining it with an iron block to harness its mystical powers of fishing, create a tackle box. Now I can attach the gold hook. That makes sense. I had a decent amount of levels thanks to all that trading from earlier and decided to see if I could finally get feather falling. And I didn't get it. I swear I'm allergic to this enchantment. I made the ultimate fishing rod and called it Rodney because I thought that was hilarious and then put it to good use. I immediately got a pretty good enchanted book. Thanks Rodney. The reason I was even fishing in the first place was because I'd heard a myth from the Vergers about the lost Neptunium tools but... That's just a myth, right? Oh, okay, they're completely real. Oh, okay, they're completely overpowered. Rodney, we need more. I found another box soon after with a Neptunium chest plate, but it had the same stats as Diamond, and I wanted to upgrade to Netherite anyway. I fished all night, even changed my spot, but didn't manage to find any more gear. It was business as usual, collecting the iron from the farm and selling it off at eye-watering prices. But the one iron farm alone wasn't supplying enough. I needed that second one up and running as soon as possible. I couldn't really do anything about that until night so I grabbed all the glass I've been smelting and turned it into tinted glass. This is what my diamond shovel died for. A cooler looking mob shoot. I got most of it done and then headed over to the villager breeder. I gave them those potatoes so there's probably a few more now. Where have you all come from? I began escorting the first one and it was going smoothly. Why did I think having a bridge one slab wide was a good idea? It was surprisingly easy to get him back on. Like weirdly easy. I'm not used to villagers doing what I want. And the second one just teleported through the wall. Alright then, I thought surely the third one's gonna make my life difficult. 
but he also just went straight in. I'm so confused on what I did to deserve this good luck, but I'm not complaining. Now that all the villagers were in the farm, all that was left for me to do was to actually finish it. It also poured with rain the entire time. I didn't actually have enough materials to finish the farm and ended up having to gather more cobblestone. I ended up coming across some more diamonds though. Four diamonds into nine? Sure, I'll take that. When I returned to the surface, it had finally stopped raining and I began ripping off the toolsmiths. They kind of looked at me like, hey, we want our money back, but sorry, no refunds. I put that in the terms and conditions because nobody ever reads those. I needed night to fall so that I could get a zombie, so while I waited, I finished decking out the mob grinder with tinted glass. After smacking some ankles, I eventually got this guy all on his own and he was just as terrible at walking in a straight line as I expected. By some miracle, I managed to get him up to the farm and soon everything was in place. Except this iron golem because he decided to show up early. You're supposed to wait until there's a pool of lava to kill you. I began building a super fun water slide and stayed up all night working on it. <sighs> I'm tired. I better get to bed. Ah, my head. Where am I? Finally, we meet. I've been trying to reach you via your dreams, but you sleep way too lightly. Do you need sleeping medication? No, I don't need. Anyway, who are you? Oh, I'm Neptune. Neptune is in the Neptune, the sea god. That would be me. The reason I've called you here, Mosey, is because the world is in danger. As you're well aware, the late Captain Agmer loosened the seal on an ancient monster. Can you be more specific than ancient monster? Well, it's the Kraken. Did you, did you not read the dictionary I gave you? I read it for a grand total of two seconds before remembering I'm a college dropout. Um, no. <sighs> Anyway, I'd fight it myself, but centuries of maintaining the seals drained me of my power. You're the only one who stands a chance against it. But you only managed to seal it away, and you're a god. Hundreds of years being sealed away has weakened it somewhat. You might not die. Oh yeah, great. No, that's really reassuring. <laughs> that's the spirit. Now, it's not quite broken through the seal yet. I'll be able to hold it at bay for three or four more weeks at most. Good luck. You're gonna need it. I somehow woke up on the shore, but that's the least of my unanswered questions. I've been tasked by an ocean god to stop an ancient monster that Agma was setting loose in order to rule the world with. I knew something was up when those villagers did what I wanted. There's no way things can go so well and then not go horribly wrong immediately after. If I was going to actually defeat the Kraken, I needed to acquire the strongest weapons and armor I possibly could, not to mention a beacon or two. I finally finished the second iron farm, but this golem was like, I can't swim. I was like, you'll be fine, and then he fell in the pool of lava I just made. It didn't look like I was getting more golems anytime soon, because the zombie had despawned. I forgot to name tag him. I was still able to flood the market with more iron, and then enchanted my Neptunium axe. This thing without sharpness hits harder than a sharpness 5 netherite axe. I wanted more Neptunium gear and needed to wait for night anyway, so I began fishing. Even with a gold hook and luck of the C3, I was finding fish after fish after- oh, there's one. Let's see what this bad boy has. Neptune, that's not funny. I was pretty annoyed, so I decided I'd name the new zombie Bad Breath. I was so mad, that's like a six-year-old's best insult. It turned out I wouldn't even need to use the name tag, because this zombie picked up a block of glass anyway. Never mind. I got another one, and... I got another one, and after receiving his name, he really wanted to die to my thorns armor. Turns out he was holding a piece of rotten flesh anyway, so he didn't even need the name tag, but his name is now Bad Breath on all legal documents, and I can't be bothered to change them. After fighting a couple monsters, I patched up the mob grinder, and then did what else except sell iron. And books. I'm getting desperate for XP, can you tell? While my mob farm does the exact opposite of giving me tons of XP, it had stored up a decent amount of gunpowder. I crafted a stack of TNT, enchanted these boots with Feather Falling 3, and went to the nether re. I, I couldn't think of any other way to get that to rhyme. I needed to dig down to mine for ancient debris, but I kept running into this lava lake. Eventually, I found a spot that didn't lead to a fiery pit and began digging a huge tunnel, which I then filled with explosives. And of course, I had a great time blowing them all up. Wow, look at that nether thing. All in all, I found a decent amount of ancient debris. I got 11 pieces in total. I chucked them in the furnace and then fished while I waited. I got a Neptune's bounty on my first catch. And do you want to know what I found inside? A fillet knife. A fillet knife. Neptune!
I sold off some iron, and thanks to this spare scrap I'd stolen earlier, I was able to craft three netherite ingots. It was a decent amount, but I'll definitely need more. As usual, I struggled to get into my enchanting room thanks to my terrible door placement. Oh, is that sweeping edge? Knockback, I don't want you. Please go away. I did some fishing for a while, but there was no sign of any more Neptunium gear. I had a plan to increase my emerald output, and it involved stepping into the food industry. In other words, I was going to get a bunch of farmers and rip them off, the usual strategy. Day 79, I checked my mob spawner to see if it had any decent bows. You know when people say a sound is painful, it's like nails on a chalkboard? Well, I was literally hearing nails on a chalkboard. Turns out this whale was somehow dying to a coral reef, so I had to help him. I mean, I kinda had no choice, he was gonna destroy my eardrums otherwise. I bought a ridiculously overpriced punch too, book, and by overpriced, I mean it just costs more than one emerald. How dare these villagers get paid properly. I made another bow and as always had to fight to get to this door. I got power 4, which I was happy with, and then got to work finding the cheapest way to combine all these bows. I could have put these two together to get a solid result, but I decided to wait until I could also get flame and infinity. I went up to the trading hall where absolutely nothing productive was going on. I mean, one guy was literally sat in a composter. I gave them a bunch of potatoes and said, make me children, please. I was painfully aware that my temple still wasn't finished, and before I get eaten by the kraken, I'd at least like my house to look nice. So I grabbed Shirley and headed into the nether, because it was time to go rob a bunch of ships. Not for their money, but for their wood. Once I was out in new waters, I saw a skeleton pirate ship, and I wanted to test my netherite armor. I jumped on board and began bullying the entire crew. It was honestly hilarious, I essentially walked through everyone. The only time I had problems was when a creeper fell on my head. But apart from that, it was a great time. The captain pretty much accepted his fate, and I don't blame him. If someone came at me with a Neptunium axe and my only defense was an unenchanted bow, I'd probably give up too. I spent a while chopping wood, and I mean, it's chopping wood. Is it interesting? No. But what is interesting is that these palm leaves break twice as slow as normal leaves. Why is that a thing? It took an unreasonable amount of effort, but I managed to collect every last leaf block from this island. I collected more wood because I guess I was on a mission to make this the most boring day possible. And get this right, I was doing the same thing the next day. I don't need this many palm leaves, why am I still going? I did also find a spruce boat, which is what I came out here for in the first place. Stole their money, stole their wood. The usual. Shirley was not having a good time. I had all the wood I needed, so I headed back home through the nether. Casually taking a shortcut through hell, as you do. I checked up on the toolsmiths, and they'd already made a couple kids. This was good. This was really good. Soon I won't just be scamming villagers, I'll be scamming their entire families. It was time to finally fix something that had been an issue for way too long. No, not my moral compass, I'm talking about the roof of the villager breeder. But as I started construction, I saw a baby zombie riding a chicken. Oh yeah, and a, and a creeper. I grabbed a lead and made my way over to the mob farm. I dealt with the problem, you know, the child, and then brought the chicken over to Banjo. I think I've been a good mate, but he needs someone he can relate to more. I named the new chicken Kazooie and then got to work building the roof. There were no more chicken related distractions and by the end of the day I was done. I harvested all my potatoes because I was still going to need more villagers and tried to make a lectern with a crafting table. Not my proudest moment. There were plenty of future workers, I mean children, being born, but I still didn't have anything to sell to them yet. My plan was to build a massive melon farm, but in order to do that I was going to need dirt. Like a lot of dirt. I started work on the fields, and even though I barely had any seeds, what I did have was a mountain of fertilizer. I didn't want to light it up with torches, so instead I went out to the ocean monument to borrow some of their sea lanterns. Except you need silk touch, so I just smashed a light, and now the police are getting called. I should, I should probably get out of here. Operation Steal the Sea Lanterns had failed, but have you heard of Operation Steal the Shroom Lights? I vaporized this piglin before collecting the four shroom lights I could actually reach. The rest of the Crimson Forest was at the top of a 50 foot cliff, but once I eventually got up, there was so much nature to exploit. In order to get back down, I had to be extremely careful. Nah, I just leapt off and hoped I wouldn't die. Huh, a skeleton and a creeper. I could get a music disc. Another rainy day, just me and this spider hanging out, working on the melon farm. Then he got in the way and I, uh, killed him. I felt kind of bad about that. I went to visit the villagers and, aw, oh, they grow up so fast. 
No, seriously, they were babies literally five minutes ago. I leveled them up so that they'd start buying melons and then paid a visit to the iron farm, which of course resulted in me waking everyone up in order to force them to trade with me. I finished off the melon farm and soon it's going to generate a huge amount of money. I'm going to need that if I'm going to get a max beacon up and running before the horror of the sea swings by for a visit. I was still holding out hope for some more Neptunium gear, but I only found fish. I finally got a sweeping edge sword that didn't have knockback and it even came with looting too as a bonus. Day 85 I was trying to get a librarian in order to get some missing enchantments and this was where I learned what true pain was. Because of all the barrels I used for my breeder, all this guy wanted to do was become a fisherman. Well at least things can't get any worse, why am I not surprised? I eventually decided these villagers were a lost cause and headed up to my trading hall instead. Thanks to the toolsmiths telling the farmers about how I saved them from being zombies, they were more than happy to pay me twice the usual price for melons. Should I stop exploiting their feelings for my own gain? I mean, I could, but I don't want to. There was a spare villager in here who I decided to make into a librarian to hopefully sell me either looting 2 or looting 3. Guess what he gave me? A million points to those of you that guessed, not looting 2 or looting 3. Night fell and he was like, oh, I'm getting a bit tired now. I said, no, I'm tired of you, but you're going to sell me this book. But his will to be annoying was far greater than I could have imagined, and after staying up the whole night with no results, I gave up. I did at least have a decent amount of levels thanks to my questionable business practices. I managed to get Feather Falling 3 on these boots, and by some miracle managed to get a Looting 2 sword. I combined these boots to get Feather Falling 4, and then... and then... Why? Why? With the levels I had left, I upgraded my Neptunium Axe to Efficiency 5 so that I could harvest my melons at absolutely breakneck speed. I don't know if this is the appropriate thing to do with a long lost Neptunium War Axe, but I'm going to do it anyway. The villagers were practically throwing their money at me at this point, and I used the levels I got to combine these two swords. I couldn't add the result to my main sword yet, but at least I could actually add gear together this time. I'm looking at you, Feather Falling Boots. Even though I was still missing flame and infinity, I decided to combine these bows anyway. Get out my bed. I was gonna need more netherite, and thanks to all the wool I've been stockpiling, I was able to craft a ton of beds. This villager walked into the nether portal, and I could help him, but I have better things to do. I couldn't find my old ancient debris mine, so I had to start a new one. It's a good job there's no lava pools around. What, were you expecting me to fall in? Because you'd be exactly right. I mean, I lived. It was just annoying. I ended up trying to find my old mine again, and this time actually succeeded. And then I mined for ancient debris. Shocker. I got 12 pieces, which I was happy with, and on my way back out, I found a hoglin burning to death. Unlucky, mate. As I made my way out, this guy decided he didn't like being on the ground anymore. I was gonna knock him off, but he jump scared me so bad I ended up dropping my pistol. Once I got back, I harvested my melons and potatoes like usual, but when I went up to the trading hall, this guy saw his chance for freedom. This will stop him. Probably should have seen that coming. I spent a while wondering what I should do with him, and then realized I don't care. I have all these farmers now, so losing one villager doesn't really matter. I crafted three more netherite ingots and used them to convert my boots and the legendary pickaxe. My sword wasn't quite perfect, so I won't convert it just yet. My house still didn't have a roof, and I wanted to fix that. Too bad I picked the most expensive roof design imaginable, and of course ended up running out of wood. I also spent some time changing the cobblestone bridge to the mob grinder into a much better looking boardwalk. I grabbed a ton of arrows from my mob spawner because tomorrow I was going to fight the ender dragon. I also added mending to my pistol and then woke this guy up in the middle of the night in order to get it fixed. Day 90, I grabbed a ton of blocks, made some ender pearls and set out with Shirley. To say I was tight on time is like saying water is wet. I had at most 10 days before the kraken broke loose and as things stood, I was going to lose. Not even lose, I was going to get annihilated. That didn't stop me from making a detour in order to gather some spruce wood. <clears throat> Where was I? Once I found the stronghold, it wasn't exactly much of a challenge to get to the portal room. I placed in the eyes of Ender, and without any further thought, walked straight in. I spawned underground, and once I dug my way out, I started taking out the crystal. I started taking out the crystal. I started taking out the... Finally. I used both my bow and my pistol, and before long, all the crystals were down. I don't know why, but my bow aim can switch from god mode to absolute potato, basically at random. Once the dragon was down to her final sliver of health, I readied my pistol and took the shot. 
She took a while, but eventually she did actually die. I felt pretty cool with this camera angle, not gonna lie. After happily running around scooping up the remains of her soul, I collected the dragon egg. The next step was to go to the outer end, so I had to fight a few of the locals to get ender pearls. I bridged over to the gateway, badly, and then headed in. I found this disgusting creature, and it got exactly what it deserved. I was expecting a long, painful search for the elytra, but soon I found not one, but two entities. I was half expecting to literally just explode on the spot, because there was no way I was getting this lucky. The guards at the entrance said I couldn't go in. That was a nice suggestion. I floated as far as I could and then pulled over to the ship. I always feel bad for the one shulker that gets left in charge of guarding the elytra. I picked up the wings, but as I was on my way out, I found a mimic cube. These stupid slimes had nearly killed me during my 100 days in better Minecraft, and I had to get revenge for that. I knocked it off with the pirate pistol and, oh, any moment now. Have fun! I didn't forget the dragon head, which is honestly pretty surprising knowing me, and then I flew over to the second city. Two is always better than one, and that principle applies when robbing people. Life lessons with Mosey, just not good ones. Oh, he's playing peekaboo, that's cute. I wanted to make sure I made it all the way back to the gateway in one go, so I pillared up until I hit the stratosphere. I don't even know what that word means, but it sounds cool. I managed to get to the gateway, nearly got mugged, and then arrived back home. Before I used all my newly acquired levels to max out my sword, I hunted for those final missing bow enchantments. I did have enough levels left to make the perfect bow, but my sword takes priority. I grabbed the iron and melons like usual. Where did you come from? And, of course, scammed everyone. They don't know that though, so it's fine. I converted my sword to netherite and put mending and unbreaking three on my elytra. In terms of rockets, the only paper I had was from looting pirate ships, so I wasn't able to make a huge amount. I tried to take off with my chest plate on and ended up murdering some innocent potatoes. Once I was up on the roof, I completed the final layer of spruce. I'm still not going to finish it yet though. This is actually starting to become a problem. Why are there so many of them? I took down my nether portal because I wanted to make a custom one. Finding the elytra had gone so smoothly that I now had some extra time on my hands. Sure, Neptune is currently using every last drop of his power to hold back the Kraken, but a little bit of building won't hurt. I gathered up some prismarine from the ocean monument because I thought some kind of sea-themed nether portal would look cool. I extended the boardwalk and then got to work. I had absolutely no plan, which is why it was not really coming out how I imagined. I made something that looked alright, but I ended up getting rid of it. I changed my approach and used some palm trees to cover up the portal instead, which wasn't a perfect solution, but it looked way better. I also put in some more work on the roof, but guess what? I still didn't finish it. Day 95, I did some trading in order to get my levels up, and at last I had a maxed out bow. I then headed into the nether because if I was going to get a beacon, I was going to need some wither skulls. And if I was going to get a finished roof, I was going to need some warped wood as well. Instead of going back to my old fortress, I started searching for a new one. The old one kind of sucked in terms of wither skeleton spawns. Along the way, I found a bastion which I decided to attack head on. That was a mistake. Oh yeah, they left all their stuff for me in their wills. Trust me. I came across a nether fortress, but there were barely any wither skirtons. I had to keep flying back and forth in order to get them to spawn, and I'm not a man with unlimited rockets. I'm a man of limited, like very limited rockets. I moved on from that fortress and ended up coming across a much better one in a basalt delta. For some reason, I decided I wasn't just going to get three with the skulls, I was going to get six. I don't know why I did this to myself, but I complained the entire time while doing it. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, and finally, there's six. I guess it could have been worse, I could have had to eat a pear or something. They are the worst fruit, I'm just saying. I started flying back through the nether, and it took a fair amount of time. Actually, it took a really long time. I made it home on day 98 and instantly started brewing potions. When I say I was running out of time, it was a Usain Bolt level of running. But even though the Kraken was just days away from breaking free, I was still working on the roof. It had taken way too long, but I finally finally finished my house, and I love how it turned out. At least now if I die, I'll be dying in style. I grabbed some blaze rods to make strength potions, and... 
you're now witnessing someone's soul shrivel up and die before your very eyes. My treasure chest had been among the ones destroyed, and I only had 5 minutes to save everything before 98 days of progress despawned in front of me. I did the only logical thing and stood in the pile throwing my stuff into random chests. Even though my storage was now a complete mess, I managed to not lose any of my items. With that problem sorted and my heart rate back in the double digits, I set out in search of a place to fight the wither. Fighting it on my island would be a recipe for disaster, and trying to fight it in the ocean would be an even bigger disaster. I stumbled across the old skeleton pirate ship that I'd saved Lewis the Parrot from, and knew this was the best area I'd be able to find. I checked to make sure there weren't any leftover enemies, and then spawned everyone's favourite three-headed monstrosity. I whittled down its health, but then it sent me flying off the ship. Except it came down to fight me head on, which kind of defeats the purpose of knocking me off in the first place, but I'm not complaining. I'll happily take a free nether star. It turned out there were a couple enemies lying in wait below decks, but I took care of them. The ship was close to falling to pieces, but I still had a rematch due with the Wither. Luckily, we had some kind of weird unspoken agreement to stay on the least destroyed part of the boat, and things ended exactly how you'd expect. I raced home and crafted the beacons. Thanks to all the treasure I've been saving up for the past 99 days, I had enough to make two maxed out beacons. Neptune had said he could buy me 3 or 4 weeks at most, and he somehow managed to pull it off. I picked Resistance 2, Strength, and Regeneration, which would give me the best possible chance of survival. I was well aware that this night could be my last. Day 100, make no mistake, the Kraken had arrived. Its huge tentacles threatened to crush me in a single blow. I tried to reposition behind my house, but it slithered after me, killing Swift in the process. I fled into the water, but this was the Kraken's natural habitat. It began tossing me around, toying with me, like I was nothing more than prey it was about to devour. I managed to keep it at bay with my bow, but slowly and surely it closed the gap between us. It got me between its jaws and the only reason I was still alive was thanks to the beacons I had worked so hard to get. I started landing huge hits with my bow and got into a deadly rhythm. As the Kraken reached desperation, it rushed in. This was it. It once again clamped down with the crushing weight of its jaw, but I was the one who dealt the final blow. Plus, if I died, who would be here to scam the villagers? Banjo, I did it. I saved the island. Ah, that's kind of awkward. I piled up my diamonds in front of my temple and then converted the Kraken's tentacles into sushi. That's right, the world's most feared monster was now rolled up in a nice little ball of rice. And I had survived 100 days in an ocean-only world. If you enjoyed this video, it would mean a lot if you dropped a like and subscribed. It has taken me over a month of work to make. Oh yeah, I wonder how the sushi tastes. Well, I'm off to go conquer the universe.